The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... all of us are who drive the freeways and the throughways of the behemoth of the road, the tractor-trailer truck. Most of the time, we mumble under our breaths at the size of these 30, 40-ton monsters, particularly on wet nights when the rain is slanting down and that swirling mist in their trail fogging and dirtying our windshields. But we seldom spare much thought to the men who drive them. See that sign, Steve? This weather, I'm lucky I can see the road. What did it say, Joe? El Paso, 34 miles. That's 34 miles too far tonight. Uh, hang in, Steve. Another hour or so, and you and me are really going to tie one on. Now, count me out. Oh, not again. I got things to do. Ever since you took over the seven runs from Big Jim, you've been a loner. Well, maybe after this trip, you won't have to put up with me anymore, Joe. What does that mean? Well, well, what kind of things? Well, first off, I must find my wife. And then? I'm going to kill her. Our mystery drama, The Reluctant Killer, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Tony Roberts. to kill her. There was something so final and deadly about the quiet statement that it got to Joe. For once in his life, he knew enough to keep quiet. He just sat in his corner of the cab, watching the big, darkly handsome man at the wheel, who handled his 30-ton rig as easily as if it were a small, compact car. The face was impassive, but that was an illusion because a stormy sea of memory was battering against the inside of his skull like waves of pain that shattered every nerve end as they broke. I was always big for my age and too strong. Mom always kept reminding me, and it was just as well, even though I long ago found that out for myself. My cousin was eight, and uh, I was just six. We were fooling around, just wrestling. I did something to his neck that put him in the hospital for near a month. I didn't mean to hurt him. He was my best friend. It was my Uncle Jan got me interested in football. So, my little strong man, this is where I come every Saturday to play our American football. A rough game, but still good for the character. And $50 extra a week during the season. Ah, that is manna from heaven. You like to grow up and be a football player? Yeah. I tell you what. I bring you and your mama here next Saturday and you take a look, huh? Then if you like, maybe I teach you to play. You will have some coffee, Jan, and some cake. No, sister. I have already little time to be back on the job. Why you call me lunchtime? I can never find you evenings. You and your your girls. <laughs> Some nights I have to study. Study football formations, who to block, what sort block, brush, hold, take down. Please, I do not want to hear. It is that game. You've gotten Stefan crazy about it. It is not for him. Why? You should know. Stefan does not know his own strength. I'm afraid since the moment he was born, he will grow up and kill someone in spite of himself. How could you know this about a baby? Uh, I see things. Even God himself should not allow me to see. Uh, Are we going back to all this Romany nonsense again? We go back to Gypsy King. (laughs) I hope not. I will be happy to settle for Slav myself. And better still, American. That cannot change what I know. And what do you know? Stefan was born the wrong side of midnight. 
What does that mean? There is death in his future. Unless he walks with great care. The tarot cards tell me again and again it is so. He is there? That is not revealed. Only that it is he or someone close to him. And that the death might be because of him. I never knew about that conversation till my mother died. I was a senior in college on a football scholarship, and by then she was resigned to it at last because it was getting me an education I couldn't have afforded otherwise. She never would have told me about her fears for me, I guess, if it weren't for the pro offers that were being dangled in front of me. Oh, I am glad the football season is over, Stefan. Now, no more wars. Uh, don't knock it too much, Mom. It, it opened a lot of doors for me. Oh, that is what I'm proud and happy for. When you get your degree, you'll be an engineer. A man with a white collar. Hey, hey, don't go kicking the blue-collar worker around. Huh? Times have changed. Oh, times, maybe. But be what the college has trained you to be. That's a pretty tough promise to ask for, Mom. Why? Oh, a lot of reasons. First of all, I love the game. I, I, I really, really do. Second, I, I may have big muscles, but I got no great brain to match them. I'm not so sure I could make it as a mechanical engineer. Last off, uh, there's an awful lot of dough in a football future for me. I'd, I'd like us to have some for a change. I want to set you up in a house of your own. No more work. No more worry. No, Steve. And before you stop me, I'll give you some first and last offs of my own. First, I don't want to say this, but you've got to know sometime... I, I haven't got too much future left, Stefan, my son. God is about ready to bring me home. I... Oh. Mom, what is it? Stefan, quick, in the kitchen, on the spice shelf behind the dill bottle, a little dark medicine bottle with small white pills. Bring them. I'll be right back, Mom. Oh, no. No, God, please... Not yet, till I know my boy is safe. That was the first information I had of my mother was dying. She and Uncle John had uh, kept the secret from me completely till that moment. How mercifully quick it was after the years of angina pains. Less than a week later, I sat with my mother before she died. She told me of a long-ago conversation with Uncle Jan, and then... That, that is why I, I feel if, if only you were away from all that violence and fighting, I, I could see happiness and peace for you, Stefan. Not, not, not for my sake, yours. Promise me no more football. The money isn't to buy something for you, Mom. What's it worth? I promise. I could have kept my promise to my mother if it hadn't have been for Pat. After Mom died with the funeral and all and my last term to get through, I took a job at a gas station part-time. I could have worked as much as I wanted because the owner soon discovered I knew most everything about a car from front end to universal, but I was having a rough time making it with the books and getting ready for finals. I worked mostly weekends. It was a Saturday morning with the sky as blue as a robin's egg that she drove in. She was driving a Maserati, which most time would have had all my attention, but... Pat could have sat in some kid brother's beat-up heap for all the notice you'd take of the car. All the way, miss? I beg your pardon? I mean, uh, fill her up? Yes. Premium. Premium? That's right. The best. Well, that's what you deserve. Nothing but. Only, uh... Only what? Well, she looks pretty new to me. What year is she? Seventy-three. Well, then you want regular. Don't tell me what I want. Well, that's your wagon, baby. You want to burn out your valves with a 95 rating? You got it. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Uh, what's a 95? Well? Excuse me. I was looking at your legs. What was the question? 
What's a 95 rating? Gas. Octane. 87. 88's all you need, and you keep your engine clean as a whistle. What'll it be? Anybody as big as you doesn't have to be conceited or show off, so maybe you know what you're talking about. Make it regular. I'd like to. What? Make it regular. Or even once. I want you to check under the hood. <laughs> I was hoping you'd ask me that. Why? Beautiful. Just beautiful. Are we starting that again? No, I was talking about this piece of machinery. Oh. Well? Well, what do you want me to check? Well, whatever. Whatever you do. Battery, oil, and things. Sure. My name is Steve Janus. I'm Pat Bard. What are you doing this evening? I have a date, of course. What could you do about it anyway? Oh, nothing. I'm, I'm closing early because I have to hit the books. I got a test coming up. I, I don't know why. I, uh... What time are you closing? 10.30. I'll pick you up at 10.30 and drive you home. Why? I don't know. I must be out of my mind. Just like me. I mean, uh, I've been that way since the moment I first saw you. And that was the beginning for Pat and me. Beginnings only seemed to signal a great, great future. If it hadn't been for a mother. Oh, not that I'd ever been smart enough to realize what a troublemaker Pat's mother was, except for what happened later. For, for beginners, I thought she was a real nice woman. I could see where all her daughter's beauty came from. I mean, Pat, and uh, I guess her mother, too, in her day, could turn on the Sphinx. Good Lord. You are one hunk of man, Mr. Stephen Americanus. The Janos, ma'am. Oh, I know your real name. But you look more like Mr. America to me. Tell me, can you isolate your stomach muscles? Bring your part. Never mind, just a trick anyway. So, you want to marry my daughter, huh? I'm going to marry your daughter. Oh, not without my consent, Buster. And approval. Oh, I didn't mean to annoy you, but... Anyone who crosses me burns me up. Look, you want to talk some more? Let's go for a swim in the pool first. <laughs> you're a heck of a swimmer, Mrs. Warfield. <laughs> well, you're not. You wallow and thrash about like a bear. Uh, it's just not my game. Oh, I know what your game is. I've watched you play a lot of years. No kid. No kidding. The penalty of my lifestyle. I watch a lot of games I don't enjoy. Even have to uh, participate in some of them. Oh, well, why do that? Because, if... my 235-pound teddy bear, I like to live in the style to which I have always been accustomed. I want the same for Pat. That's why I loosened the apron strings on you. Excuse me? What league are you going to sign with, Steve? Oh. Well, that's up to Uncle Jan. I, I like the NFL myself, but that's mostly because I always rooted for the Browns. <laughs> I must admit I wouldn't have minded being their den mother myself. But uh, you are going to play pro football. Yes, ma'am. I expect to. Uh-huh. And, um... What kind of contract does your Uncle Jan expect to negotiate for you? Well, uh, I think it's kind of crazy myself, but they're talking about 500000 no cut, three-year guarantee. Uh-huh. But uh, just for your own protection, let's wait till we get that contract signed first. Hmm? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I've got to know I can support a wife. I, I got some pride, you know. Suddenly, I was seeing my future mother-in-law clearly for the first time. I wasn't a person to her, just a commodity, a buy or sell or accept as a gift. She didn't care about Steve Janus, only that he represented a half a million bucks on the hoof. I'd have cut out there and obeyed my promise to my mother if it hadn't been for Pat. She was what I loved. She was the only one important to me. Nothing could change that. I might want to kill her mother, but I never could feel that same way about Pat. I... I'm just not built that way. I couldn't kill a fly. Uh, Steve. Yeah, Joe. You okay? Yeah, why? We just passed an El Paso city limit sign. 
I, I thought you ought to know. I saw it. You look like you was a hundred miles away. Don't worry about me. Even if I was high as a kite, I could still haul freight. Oh, sure, sure. You got the touch. Yeah. I just got the creeps with all that talk about you planning to kill your wife. I don't go for that kind of kidding so good. Ah, I wouldn't blame you, Joe. Because I'm not kidding. And with that last statement from Steve, Joe returns to his corner for good. He wants no part of this personal vendetta. And yet, Joe is going to find out that he will turn up right square in the middle of it with no escape and no excuse and a horrendous multiplication of what he thinks is terror. of the big tires on the wet highway has slowed a little now that the big trailer truck is approaching the city. But inside the cab, they seem even louder in the silence between the two men. Joe sits hunched over, staring straight ahead through the half circle of clear glass the windshield wiper keeps open against the driving rain, sneaking a sidelong glance every so often at Steve. But Steve is lost again in his own thoughts driving mechanically with his body reflexes while his mind courses through the past. We were married a week after I graduated. The day I signed my final contract with the Pumas. The headlines embarrassed me, but Pat and her mother really went for them big. Star, fullback signs, own interference. Steve, killer, Janus, Wed's former Patricia Bard. And, and captioning one picture, Beauty and the Beast. The last one really got to pack. That's dirty pool. What's that? This headline, Mother. Oh, <laughs> you can't deny it's true. Oh, just look at that beautiful animal you married. If you weren't my own little girl, I'd be fitting an arrow to my bow right now and off on the chase. Yeah, if you did, I'd never stop running. <laughs> Why? Am I so bad? Ah, you know, I didn't mean it that way, Mrs. Bard. <laughs> I just meant you're kind of a bit much for any guy to handle. <laughs> oh, well, never you worry about me. You just take care of my baby in the way to which he's accustomed. Lord knows you're going to be rich enough. Mother! Oh, Pat, don't go ingenue on me. Money may not buy happiness, but it sure makes it a lot easier to find. And keep. Oh, now off you go, you two. It's going to be a short enough honeymoon as it is. <laughs> I didn't realize how true that was at the time. Sure, I had two weeks before training camp began, but there was more to it than that. Some dark shadow that moved like a warning somewhere in the back of my mind. Even during the honeymoon on our lost island in the Bahamas, every so often it would stir enough to make Pat notice. Oh, Steve, isn't it sheer, unadulterated heaven? Pat. Standing like that with your hair streaming in the wind and those white drops of water gleaming like pearls against your skin. You're the most beautiful, perfect thing God ever made. <laughs> You're pretty impressive yourself in the altogether. And I never thought of you as a poet. No, oh, I'm no poet. I'm just a guy in love with a goddess. <laughs> How can I be sure you love me the way I love you? Don't I show you? Oh, I don't mean that. I mean, uh... I mean... What? Oh, I don't know. I... I get scared sometimes. It's... Uh, ah, you know, it's a celebrity bit. Don't you think I like to be the wife of Stephen Killer Janus? Oh, don't say that. What? That screwball nickname they hung on me. You do mow them down, lover. Yeah, but it's a game, Pat. It's a game. I don't want to hurt anybody. I know how gentle you can be. But I get my kicks, too, watching you from the stands. Yeah, but that's what worries me, see? Supposing it all ended. I blew the ligaments in a knee. I picked up a compound fracture in a pileup. Shh, don't talk about things like that. Yeah, but a football player lives with injuries every time he suits up. Supposing I really bought an injury that ends my career, like Tucker Fredrickson or somebody. You won't. Not my Iron Man. What if I did? Oh, I'd miss seeing you play. The excitement and all. But it wouldn't be that bad. And we'd still have the money. The money? Well, 
if you're injured or something, that doesn't cancel the contract, does it? No, but... If there wasn't that kind of money, Pat, I mean, would it... Would it make that much difference to you? For Pete's sake, Steve. What is this, a back meeting or a honeymoon? Now, can we just change the subject? What's the matter with you, anyway? I didn't actually know what was the matter with me at that moment. It was something that had been building up for a long time without me knowing it. Maybe without my wanting to face it. But back in training camp, I found out I was going to have to. It took me most of the summer to make up my mind, but the third exhibition game did it for me. Before I took final action, I talked it over with Uncle Jan. Well, why do you come to me, Stefan? You know the answer. Yeah, the answer, sure. But have I the right to make that decision? No one else can make it for you. But about that decision, yes. I will talk a little if you want. Yeah, that's why I came to you. Mm -hmm. So you broke Magorsky's back on a block. Now, that is too bad. No one likes injuries. But that's the game. Ah, game. It stopped being a game a long time ago, Uncle Jan. But it bought me a college education. It'll make me a rich man. In spite of all that, it's still a game. A man's game, a challenge. Not many play only for the money. No one can pay a man enough to take the punishment he takes in the pros. You must pay yourself on the inside with the heart and the mind to balance out the agony you ask your body to accept. And you no longer can. I didn't have to hit Magorsky that hard. Jones already had him off the ball carrier, but that's what the coach demands. He gave you the nickname originally, didn't he? Killer. Yes. When I was still in college, I always hated it. I run the only way I know how. I I don't want to hurt anyone. When that whistle blows, I don't see guys, human beings, anymore. I just want to get out there and hit. And hit. And hit till it hurts the other guy more than me. I wanted to hurt Magorsky. He slipped a block on me early in the game. I wanted to kill him. This isn't the beginning anymore, Uncle Jan. This is the end. It isn't a game anymore. It's making me into my name. Then you quit. Just like that? <laughs> I have a wife. I've got an expensive house. An even more expensive mother-in-law. How do I support him? You're an engineer. Ah, I wouldn't be a good one. A mechanic. That's what I am. That's what I'd like to do. Run my own shop. Cars. That's it, then. Get a gasoline franchise. A first-class garage. That takes money. And if I quit football, money's what I ain't gonna have. <laughs> I've been saving all my life. I'll put up the money, you run the front, the, the repair shop. Stefan, son, we'll go into partnership together. What a load off my back. I couldn't wait to get home and tell Pat she'd been complaining what a bear I was around the house. And now I could tell her why and we could get back to the way our marriage had started off. I was as happy as a kid with a brand new bike when I got home. Even Pat's mother being there didn't dampen or stop me. I blurted it out to both of them in the kitchen. Quit football? What about your contract? There's no way they can make me play. Couldn't they sue? Ah, for the peanuts they paid me so far, they don't have to. I'll pay it back. You couldn't play for any other team. I'm never going to play football again. You're going to be a mechanic a cheap, dirty grease monkey. Now, wait a minute. But how can we keep this house? We won't be able to afford... Oh, sure, sure. We'll have to pull in our horns. We'll have to get a small apartment for a while that you could take care of. Honey, you remember I asked you once if the money made all that difference between us? And maybe you remember I didn't answer. I should hope not. Look, are you trying to tell me that just because you suddenly are getting a little squeamish about hurting your fellow man, you're going to renege on what you offered my daughter? That you expect to turn her into some sort of middle-class drudge? Who spends her life at a washing machine cleaning your oily overalls? Why don't you stay out of this, Joy? Let, let me handle it, Mother. Honey, you're tired and you hurt, and I know this period of training is awful tough on you. Why don't you have a little rest, and then we can... Look, look, Pat, I didn't make up my mind two seconds ago. This took a long time, and it's final. Come on upstairs, baby, and let's you and I work it all out. Before you... I have already talked to management. I quit. It's too late. Without even asking Pat. Joy, 
If Pat loves me, she has to see that I have to quit. Otherwise, I'm turning into another person neither of us knows. But you can't give up all that money. Oh. Oh, honey, I, I didn't mean that. I... I suddenly realized that, yes, you did. I want to get out of here for some fresh air. Where are you going? I'm going downstairs to the garage to get the car. I'm going for a ride to my lawyer and make damn well sure I'm clean out from under. Oh, baby, you're so tired and confused. Let Pat talk to you a little and show Get away you. from me, Pat. Don't do that to me again. It's only for your own good. Get away from me. You keep your hands off. I don't help me. Ah! I, don't, I don't only pushed her away in a moment of revulsion, but as usual, I wasn't conscious of my own strength. Fortunately, Pat wasn't seriously hurt. But on a witness stand, in a court, and with the attorney's pictures to hand around, she looked as though I'd tried to beat her to a pulp. Because that's what my loving wife and mother-in-law did to me. They brought me to court for wife-beating. Because my decision about the football contract was irrevocable. They lied. I was given a year's sentence in jail. They let me out after eight months on parole. Big deal. I have to prove myself for nothing. Well, when I find Pat, I'm going to prove out a lot of things. Uh, Steve. Huh? You know you're talking out loud. What was I saying, Joe? Well, just about your marriage and all. You know I was in jail? Yeah, yeah, you said that. And why? Yeah. Yeah, but, but honest, uh, I, I believe you the way you said it. The, well, the only thing is, what's the point in holding a grudge? A matter of pride. Yeah, but, well, I mean, <laughs> to kill someone. How'd you expect to get away with it? Doesn't matter much if I do. I think you're trying to strain me. Why? Well, all this McGill about knocking off someone. I mean, supposing I was to turn you into the parole officer. Or even the police. You wouldn't want to get mixed up in this, Joe, would you? No. But if something did happen, I'd be the first one they'd question. I'd have to tell the cops. <laughs> I'll be over the border by then. Mexico. Ever since I got out of jail, I've been packing it away. A year. 75 bucks a week or more. I got pretty near 5,000 bucks. Right here. This money belt goes wherever I go. Oh, why don't you forget it? Write her off. It's just another dame. Another dame. You ever been in love, Joe? Well, my own way. I mean, what am I so much? I draw only the dogs. Oh, but there is this girl at the Paradise Restaurant I've been telling you about. Hey, look. Why don't we garage this heap and you and me go over there and have some laughs and like, huh? Well, like, well, maybe like cheer you up. Ah, uh, no sale. I couldn't look at anyone since Pat. Pat? That was her name. Pat Bard. Oh, what'd she look like, this... Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I bet she was some looker, huh? <laughs> Poor old cabin buddy. Why should I saddle you? Uh, you asked for it, so here. Look for yourself. That, sir, your Pat? My sometime wife. Well, she... She's something to... What we stop for? Well, the parole officer just down the street. I might as well check in. You haul a rig in and garage it. Look, I'll buy you dinner, huh? Meet you later at that... Paradise Restaurant. Oh, no, no. Look, Steve. No, no, forget it. You, you don't have to on account of me. Oh, no, I want to. I got the word that Pat's working as a waitress at some joint. It's one I haven't checked out. <laughs> don't worry, Joe. If I find it, you won't be involved. Check. Yeah, check. Just keep your nose out of this and stay clean. And if you only knew, Steve, it just doesn't happen to be that easy, buddy. A mumbled comment to himself, on which we can eavesdrop, but that Steve doesn't hear. What does it mean? How can Joe, who is no part of Steve's past, have any relation to his present or his future? If you 
have a suspicion by now that Joe is not telling Steve everything he could. You might be right. But this is an evening for evasion in general. And suspicion. Because as Steve faces his parole officer, he obviously conceals his intentions towards his wife if and when he finds her. And I'm saying it again, Janos. I'm not so happy about this arrangement. I'm only doing it as a favor to Sam Brooks, your own parole officer up in Houston. Yeah, but Mr. Kiefer, why do you object to my getting a job? Well, you're a graduated engineer and a top mechanic. I don't like this shuttling between cities. If it wasn't for Sam, you couldn't hold a job like you have. Yes, sir. Mr. Brooks has been real nice to me. You ever hear from your wife? No, sir. Except the one time she sent me the divorce papers. Yeah, but you've no idea where she is now. No, no, sir. Don't you care? Well, after what happened? As far as I'm concerned, Mr. Kiefer, my wife is dead. Well, I'm not trying to rub your nose in it. I just want to point out that your year's almost up, and then you'll have us off your back. So don't get in any trouble in my backyard. I'll throw the whole book at you if you do. I'll tell you why I called you, Sam. Your favorite parolee, Steve Janos, was just in. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what a big football fan you are. Me, it's the ponies. What's on my mind? I don't know. The Cleveland police just sent me down a picture of that wife of his. And... Huh? Oh, no. She's not marked up in what I'm looking at. Sensational looking doll. Too good to just pass up. What I want to know is, how are you coming on that trace you've had out on her? Yeah. Well, the moment anything turns up, you get on the pipe. Even tonight, I'll be here late. I wouldn't want to know that your boy and this girl were in the same town. That could be begging for trouble. The manager said you had some trouble with the other waitress. Can I help? <gasps> Steve. Hi, Pat. Fancy meeting you here. How did you find me? When I got out of jail, I discovered your mother had died. You sold a house and moved. Somebody told me you'd gone to work as a waitress. I started out combing every restaurant in Cleveland. I, I came south. Yeah. When I got my copy of the divorce papers, they were postmarked El Paso. I got a job holding freight down here. I've been looking for you ever since. What for? We gotta talk, Pat. You and me. I, I can't. I work here. What is this? This masquerade. You working as a waitress. I have to. What for? To earn a living. I don't believe you. What difference does it make? We're through. No. I have to talk to you. All right. Uh, they're calling me from another table. I should be through in half an hour or so. I'll be back. No, not here. Uh, don't make any trouble for me. I'll meet you at my place. Where? I live right down the street, right off the dock by the river. The last cabin out on the jetty. I'll meet you there after I'm through. How do I know you won't run out on me? I promise you I... Look, here's my key. You can wait in my cabin for me. Now I've got to take care of my customers. <laughs> I looked around for Joe, but I guess he decided he didn't want any part of me after what I told him. I realize now, since the Paradise was his favorite joint, he must have recognized Pat from the picture I'd shown him. I could only hope he hadn't hollered copper, but at least he hadn't tried to warn Pat. In the back of the restaurant was the jetty Pat had mentioned, only it was more of a string piece bridging out to a small island with some summer cabins on it. The others were lighted, one dark... That would be Pat's. I would do it here. My hands on her throat were strong enough to snap it rather than strangle her and then her body into the river. I started to wait. Oh, hello, Sam. Who? Pat Patricia Barr. Oh, yeah, that's right. That was her maiden name. You located her how? Through the waitresses union, huh? Well, I didn't know she was working. Where? The Paradise Restaurant right here in El Paso? 
I had a sneaking hunch your boy had a good reason for working this job. He's been hunted for her, and now he's found her. Yeah, 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 it could be natural enough, and maybe he just wants to kindle an old flame, but me, I'm a cynic. Maybe nothing's going to happen, but I'm getting my tail over there as fast as I can to make sure nothing does. Why didn't you wait in the cabin? I wanted to make sure you were alone. Who would I have with me? Cops, maybe. Why would you think that? You did the last time you came for me. Where have you been? You don't have to hold me so tightly. I'm not going to run. That's what I decided, you see. When you carry something inside you, there's no point in running away. It goes wherever you go. I can't leave it behind. What? My... My shame. Shame? At what I did to you. Steve, please, let's go inside. I want to talk to you. No. You and me, we don't go anywhere together. Ever again. Is that all you came to tell me? I came to get back at you for what you did to me. I've been paid back for that already. Look at how I ended up. A cheap little waitress and even cheaper little joints. Eight lousy, stinking months in the tank with drunks and deadbeats and junkies. Steve, please, give me another chance. Let's go in the cabin. A four. Maybe we can still make things right. After what's happened. There can't be nothing left for us. That's all there is. Nothing. Nothing. Except to even the score. All right. If that's the way you want it. Why don't you do what you came back to do? Why don't you kill me? I... I can't. Isn't that what you came to do? Yes. I sat in that cell. And the shame of why I was there ate at my guts. Hate. Festering inside me till the day I could find you and pay you back for what you did to me. And now I... Yes. Now? Now I know why I searched so long. It wasn't hate. It's because I still love you. I want you. I hate myself for that worse than ever. Why? Because you don't want me. You never did. I won't come crawling. You wouldn't have to crawl, Steve. Oh, it's too late, Pat. How could I ever trust you again? You can trust me. If only I knew I could. Steve... Yes. You want the real reason I was late tonight? Because I knew what you planned to do. I knew you were planning to kill me. How? The little man that rides the truck with you, Joe. He's been in the restaurant before. And after you went out, he came in and warned me. Said he recognized me from a picture you showed him. That's why I started to run. Then why'd you come back? Because one of the things I learned in the past year is that I really love you, too. Without you, there's nothing. I might as well be dead. You took the chance that I... I was willing to gamble on you. Would... Would you take a chance on me again? Do you still have my key? Yes. Then let's go in, and I'll prove it to you. Welcome home, Steve. Oh, Pat, I love you so much. Did you kill him, Joe? No. No, I just sapped him. I see. He, he's out cold. Now, where you been? Oh, first I got held up at the restaurant. Then he was waiting for me on the walk outside. Well, what are you waiting for? Huh? Get the money. Uh, 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 just a minute. What am I getting into? You're already in, Joe. Come on. I got my car waiting. We can be across the border in less than an hour. And in Mexico, with 5,000 bucks, we can live like royalty. You, you really mean us, baby? I know you go for me. Uh, the way you always came to the restaurant. Uh, and I go for you, too. Yeah, yeah. You on the level, huh? Just try me. <laughs> That's a down payment. All right, now, let's get that money belt off him and roll him in the river. Hold on, wait a minute. 
Wait a minute. I, I, I ain't going for murder. You won't have huh? to, Joe. Oh, who are you? Not exactly a real cop, lady, but the gun is real. You know, it's funny. All I was looking for was a possible parole violator. And now look at the can of worms I opened up. Okay, Joe, turn around and put your hands behind you. Oh, officer, you don't know Just how... Just don't move, lady. I get nervous when both my hands are busy. You don't know what I've been through. The man on the floor was my former husband. We were going to have a reconciliation. And then this man came from nowhere and hit my husband with something and knocked him out. He was going to steal my husband's money and, and force me All to... right, Sarah Burner, turn it off. It won't work. Cute little item, isn't she, Joe? How long do you think you'd have lasted? She'd have ditched you the first stop for gas. Aren't you going to take her in, too? I don't know. That's a question. She's a good looker. She might just beat the rap with only my word against hers. Of course, now, we, if I had a witness... If I had a hand free, I'd belt her one like Steve ought to have in the first place. Okay, okay, officer. You've got your witness. But, officer, you, you don't understand. You're right, I don't. I meet all kinds, and most of the worst got some good in them. But I sure don't understand anyone like you. I wonder if you, like myself when I first heard it, were as surprised at the outcome as I was. I thought for once we had a love story with a happy ending. Ah, me. Life is full of little disappointments. Thinking it over, it occurs to me that it all did have a happy ending. Joe and Pat were convicted of aggravated assault and battery and drew sentences of four to five years. It was a little rough on Steve at first, but the shock was enough to clear Pat Bard out of his mind for good. And he and his Uncle Jan finally opened their service station in Houston. Of course, he still flies more and more often to El Paso. It seems that Officer Kiefer has a very cute kid sister and, uh... But that, of course, is another story they'll have to complete. Our cast included Tony Roberts, Roberta Maxwell, Leon Janney, Bryna Rayburn, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. It will destroy the whole world. This excitement, it's not good for you. The world, it's lost unless there is a new 36 man. Take my place. You must do it quickly. Quickly before no, I don't, die. Don't, don't get up. Don't try to get up, please. Say yes, Harry. Say yes. And suddenly there is an end to thunder and lightning, the wind. Suddenly, every cloud disappear. A bright sun will shine in a peaceful heaven. Just rest. Not try to... Say yes. Only you can save the world. Say yes. Me? Me save the world? Yes. Oh. You. Only you can save the world. Harry. Harry, say yes. Harry. Yes, yes. All right, yes. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre.